Day 3 of the St. Daniel Comboni Novena We journey with him as we explore his fruits, starting with the Comboni fathers and brothers. I was introduced to faith seriously by my parents, so we used it to pray together as a family. And I grew loving church. I joined a group at the church called Exaverians. And it was in this Xavierian that I learned how to serve. We had five pillars, and one of it was charity, uh, to go and, and help the poor, carry some water, fetch some firewood for the, you know, for the poor. And uh, I learned that you know, there is this call within me to, to serve God. Uh, I remained that group, and uh, later I finished uh, primary seven, went to secondary school where I joined YCS. I became much active in YCS and I continued to nurture, no, to nurture my, my faith. I, and uh, it was in senior four when I started, you know, discovering more and more really to be a priest. I had tried in the primary school to join the minor seminary, but there was a certain issue that I could not join at that moment, but I remained with a desire. Uh, the story of my vocation is quite long because uh, I had the desire to become a priest when I was about seven years old. Seven years. Yes, my family was so much involved in church activities. My dad, God bless his soul, um, he was a catechist. And uh, the whole family was so much involved in, uh, in prayer, in liturgy, in all that ha had to do with church activities. I kept the desire to become a priest, uh, but I didn't know the, the difference between missionaries and non-missionaries in a way. And uh, a number of my teachers encouraged me to keep the desire because I guess they were seeing something in me that was orienting towards that kind of vocation. Yeah. All along as a child I wanted to become a priest. and. Uh, it seems my parents also got to know that I had that desire in me. That's why after the First Holy Communion we were asked and my dad also asked me what I wanted to become and I said I want to become a priest. But I only knew diocesan priesthood and uh, that's why uh, I was taken to the minor seminary of my diocese, Pukalasa Seminary, where I was not taken but I desired to join. And I spent my six years there. We, I had written application to join minor seminary. You know, in the in the religious setup, if your parents are not married in the church, and then it becomes very difficult for you to get into religious formation. Uh, I had the, the inspiration of becoming a Homboni missionary when. A Komboni missionary who has been in Uganda came to preach a retreat when I was in the seminary in Mantua, I was the diocesan seminary. I was in a second, senior secondary school. And uh, after that retreat, I went to him and said I would like to become a missionary also. And then I, at the end of the year, I decided to enter the Komboni missionary. And uh, I remember when I was in uh, S5, senior five, I applied in the diocese. And uh, I was in touch with the vocational director of Mbarara Archdiocese. And after senior six, he invited me to go and, uh, and join. But at the same time, I had a, a sponsorship uh, from, the, from the government to study business uh, course, marketing at, uh, at MOOBS. That time it was in Akawa. So I was in between there, but I, for me what I wanted was to be a Catholic priest. I approached my parish priest, my parish priest turned me down. He said, no, you have been invited by the gov by government sponsorship, first go and study the vocation. If God is still calling you, you will find your vocation, you will always be a priest. I tried to apply to the minor seminary, but um, I was not taken because we were too many. I went to secondary school and um, my chaplain encouraged me. I used to talk to my chaplain about that. And uh, before the ordination, they asked me where I wanted to go. 
And I said I would like to go to Sudan because Kumboni has been working in Sudan. But then fortunately they sent me to Uganda, which is much better than Sudan. I don't know if I have managed Sudan. Then as time went by, I forgot about becoming a religious or a priest because the idea was to be a priest. I forgot about it. But when I got in touch with the Komboni missionaries at Mbia, by then we used to you know, to work with those of the Enrico. Enrico, you know, and the team, they had a, a group in Kataza looking after some boys from the streets. And the, that's what actually basically touched me. I saw this Italian man from Italy coming, staying in Kataza. That time Kataza was, was a slum, actually. It was a pure village. Then I was like, what made him to come from Italy? you know, leave everything and come to serve here. This was just within me. Then I said, mm, there must be something special. It must be the love of God. And uh, before completing Senior Six, I had a colleague, a friend of mine, uh, who were doing Senior Six together, who happened to be an aspirant of the combined missionaries. And uh, that friend was called it Tony Chagulanyi. We used to share many things together. And Tony talked to me about the Komboni missionary. Having experience of being rejected in the prim at primary level when I want to join a minor seminary, I explained to him, then he said, the level where I have reached, there should to be a problem. So I came here in 1969 and uh, I, I have to learn Luganda. I have been uh, in Kasala for five years. Then I was in a seminary uh, in uh, Florence. And then I, when I came back, I, uh, they posted me to Mbuya. In 1990, I went back to Kasala after Museveni, this, the, the war of Museveni. Uh, destroyed many schools and churches, so we went back to rebuild. So I am still in Kasala now, and uh, I am happy to be a Komboni missionary. The Paris where the priests were coming, uh, they were brothers. This, we are talking about Komboni missionaries, they were brothers. Also, they move to meet people, they see people, uh, but mostly they were more in construction work uh, and then uh, uh, and then uh, also leadership work uh, I think training of young people especially in practical aspects so seeing all this drew my heart to become a missionary a brother yes but then in the third year I also got to know the experience of the component missionaries through the, the leadership magazine, which they have always published. And uh, that experience, in a way, ignited in me the desire to become a missionary. And uh, I, I didn't even know what it means to become a missionary, but I knew that if uh, I get to know more about the component missionaries, I would find a home there. And in fact, I found a home there. And I'm happy that I belong to these a family, bigger family of Komboni in the world. And uh, it, at the same time I was, you know, active at Mbuya Parish, working with Father Dodo, Father Keti, and uh, Father Mwanela, Piepor, you know, Piepor with the youth in St. Kizito. At the same time I would teach Catechism in St. Kizito with Father, um, yeah, we, with Father Keti, we used to go now to groups, uh, different, the Bondos, you know, if you remember, going to the ends of Chenawataka, Mbuya village, Banda, at that time there were not so many, I mean, buildings like now. We used to go to the, to the Ubugorovi in the, in, the, in the flats, in the bungalows, you know, in this, uh, you know, popular missions when we were about to celebrate Easter or Christmas. So I got immersed in that apostolate of the church, besides my studies at MOOBS, that I felt myself like I really have to serve God in this way. Now, one day, a, a Kombon missionary came to our school to visit my friend, Tony. 
And Tony was so glad that he called me <laughs> to, and introduced me to this uh, Kombon missionary. That Kombon missionary was Father um, Lorenzo Carraro. He was the vocations director at that time. So I got to know the Kombon missionaries first through uh, Anthony or Tony Ichagulani, my friend, who introduced me to the first Kombon missionary I saw, who was Lorenzo Carraro. And uh, I, I was so, um, so, so pleased to meet Lorenzo Carraro. He was a very jolly man, a very friendly man. At the end of S6, before we sat for the exams, he sent me an invitation for a come and see experience, which was done at Mbuya, uh, to, be, to be exact. So we came together, a number of boys at Mbuya, uh, and after they come and see, some of us were uh, selected to join the, the postulancy. That's the first year of philosophy. And I was among those who were selected. Unfortunately, my friend who, invite, who invited me to see the combined missionaries was not selected, you know. We always make fun about that when I meet him. You know, I would study in the morning, then in the afternoon I would go and work there. I was getting my money. But at the same time, I had that strong, you know, that strong feeling that, that really I want to serve God in the Catholic Church, to be a missionary. Then I finished my course, and um, when I finished, I got a full-time job to be a manager of uh, a farmer's that time, or an Amirembe farmer's, which was at the exit of the new park. And I worked there. I worked there full time managing the farmers. But still within me was like, you have to go and serve God. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I, I joined the combined missionaries. And then I started that long journey of uh, formation, uh, three years of, of philosophy, then two years of novitiate at Namugongo, then five years of theological studies in France, in Paris. And then I came back for ordination in uh, um, 1997. I was ordained at Villa Maria uh, with uh, a number of diocesan priests. I remember the day when I was to, to leave, my, my boss actually, they were not so happy, my directors, because they really wanted to remain there working, but I said, here I can't uh, do much, I have to listen to my heart. Like we saw in his life journey on June 1, 1867, Daniel Comboni under the Bishop of Verona founded the Missionary Institute for Africa through which two colleges emerged in Cairo on December 8th the same year. Daniel Comboni uh, started this uh, family of, missionary, uh, of missionaries, men and women, and uh, it has continued up to today in a number of countries, although at first the focus was on the center of Africa, that is the Sudan, but today we are in a number of African countries uh, and also in other continents. Because while at the time when Daniel Comboni started or was involved in missionary activity, the poorest um, place he knew was Africa. That was the most needy. <laughs> it was Africa, and he was taken up by this. The need there was, the suffering that Africans were going through. The fact that um, some people even considered Africans to be a subhuman, kind of. You know. But today, uh, we see these realities which touched the Kombon, we see them present in other continents as well. Uh, talk of uh, injustices, talk of disease, talk of uh, different types of suffering, and the fact that millions or billions of people have not yet known Christ or have not had the gospel of Christ. So uh, we continue the work of Comboni, but not only on the African continent, but in other parts of the world. The charism is to work among the poorest and most abandoned. You see, different congregations or different religious congregations have different charisms. And it is through this charism you serve the needy, you serve the people of God. So through Komponi, when I discovered that to serve among the poor people and those who are most abandoned, I will need to be a Komponi missionary.
153 years later, today we have what started as a seminary or missionary institute for the African missions evolve and develop new forms in the history of the church. There is something, maybe it is also human, that people understood whoever was a foreigner and maybe a white man, that was clearer to say that he was a missionary, came from somewhere else, was sent to the people here. As time, of course, uh, went on, that as we, we say we are an international uh, missionary congregation with many people from various uh, uh, countries. And uh, personally, I would say that it is now the time also that we all understand that the work of evangelization has to be carried forth by those who are there and where they are being planted. I even would say that I've been planted here in our land of Africa to give my humble contribution to the work of evangelization. And uh, for us missionaries, what is to be done, in fact, is to announce the liberating message of the gospel uh, and uh, to encourage as many as possible to be collaborators so that this work uh, continues. Uh, there is an experience which I would like to share with you. When in 69 Pope Paul VI came to Rubaga, the cathedral was full of white priests and sisters. The, Baganda, the, the Ugandans were very few. When Pope Francis came in, uh, the, Basilic, in, in the cathedral of Rubaga, they were all Africans, the priests and the sisters. We, white, we are just a few. To tell you the change which has been going on these years, that is, the church has really took root. Priests, sisters, catechists. So now we have a Uganda church, which is our joy to see that Uganda now not only are evangelizing in Uganda, but also in Africa. And the spirit of Kumboni is this, that evangelize through Africans and bring the gospel through the Africans. Following its logical development, this certainly has led to the formation of a stable societies of common and apostolic life. We today have the association of clerics and laymen consecrated to the mission held together by strong bonds of belonging and stability. The Komboni priests and brothers of the Institute of Missionaries for Africa globally, known also as MCCJ.